A Goshen man sued the Pascagoula School District after his son's cell phone was seized during class. The cyberbullying is a huge issue. Oh, we never yeah. had these major bullying issues. I mean, we had bullying issues, but not to the point that it's building up to now. I think you eliminate those cell phones out of school, you're eliminating a big problem. You can ban them, but enforcing the ban will be a task in itself. Pat Technology is an integral part of American society today. Computers, tablets, and wireless internet have revolutionized the public's access to ever-changing information in the past couple of decades, and it is hard to imagine our world without it. But necessary technology is not limited to these devices. A resource just as valuable and prevalent is the cell phone. 88% of American adults own one. Landlines are becoming obsolete as cell phones continue to boom. Cell phones have come a long way. The cell phone empire began a mere 24 years ago with the creation of the Cellular Technology Industry Association. In the time since then, cell phones have become more reliable, more compact, and more affordable. They have become not only calling devices, but messaging devices, and essentially, in the case of smartphones, mini computers. Children of the 21st century have grown alongside cell phones. Most of their parents own them, and many of the children and teens do too. Cell phone use is a skill that is nearly innate in the students in today's classrooms. They communicate with them and rely on them. 54% of teens have cell phones and 23% have smartphones. Despite this, 49% of teens regularly use the internet on a smartphone, even if it isn't their own. Clearly, the world of cell phones is broad. Why then are phones banned in most public schools across the country? Schools could be using these devices to their advantage. Phones engage and excite the current student audience. To find out how 21st century learners themselves feel about cell phones in the classroom, we interviewed students at the College of Worcester. I think smart board, um, but and it helped a lot with notes and they teachers put homework online, but it was also bad because a lot of teachers couldn't properly use it. I think technology in the classroom is effective. It helps evaluate the means that how much of the students have learned. In my school we had these remote controls and we did like a quiz together. So we would be able to see the results. Okay, 35% of the students got this question wrong. Let's, let's go over that because this is a significant number. So help pinpoint problems that our class had as a whole. It's good um, if you're somebody no, who is like, good about taking notes, um, but I think it's bad in the way that you have like um, websites such as like Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr available to you, um, which are you know distractions during class. As an English major and a philosophy major, I really like the book, um, but I do see how technology may aid teachers in getting material across. I think that it is usually a good thing, but there shouldn't be a technology requirement because then some teachers try to work it in and it doesn't work very well. I think technology in the classroom is bad. Um, usually it's not used efficiently. I've rarely ever seen a kid on the computer just doing schoolwork. I think it's good when the teacher knows how to use it effectively. It really depends. Like my sophomore year, the state gave us the whole classroom iPod touches and they were really fun and effective because they, they got to actually do their homework because they had an iPod touch to do it on. But a lot of technology is kind of overwhelming and takes the attention away from the actual learning. Good. Do you think so? Definitely really made everything easy for sharing things with our teachers. In most cases good as long as the professor is using them effectively to help us. Cell phones are very much like cars. Um, now, nowadays you need cars. Cell phones are the are that way too for the kids. It's part of their life and we need to work with it. We don't stop cars because people get into an accident. We teach them how to use cars properly. I think they're a big distraction for high school I like students. Well, I mean, it depends. It's nice to check the time and stuff. Maybe like when the class is getting boring, you can check, take it out, check it Facebook or Twitter. But for the majority of the party, you should be focused on the class. Because obviously students can do other things even if it might seem like they're doing whatever they should be doing with it. As much as like I wanted to use my cell phone in the classroom, it's probably bad. I think bad because most people use them to cheat. I don't see how they could be good. I mean, just a distraction. Yeah, I think that they could be used really well. Like you could have programs that you could use quickly in class, 
um, to access the internet. But um, most of the time, people, it just distracts them. Overall, I think they're generally bad. I have a hard time imagining an instance in which they would be more helpful than harmful. I think students naturally want to socialize, and I think cell phones are pretty instrumental in that. I would say they're bad because they lead to many, many distractions. So I'm finished on time. They had to be off except for lunch. It wasn't that effective. People often had them on, but if you got caught with your cell phone, you'd get them taken away by security. I still put my ways to text, and I would go to the bathroom and text. Um, yeah, we didn't have any phones. They're supposed to be turned off, obviously. So I think overall it was pretty effective, yeah. If someone saw your phone, they'd take it. And if they saw it three times, they would confiscate it. And your parent would have to pick it up. Um, it was a very strict policy. And depends on who you were, were, it was effective. Like, the good kids clearly didn't get it taken because they're good kids. But the bad kids, it was like, you mess up once and your cell phone's gone. Um, some kids actually had theirs taken all year, or like their parents had to come get them, and it was really serious. Most teachers forbid them, but I had two teachers who let us use them, and most people cheated. We had like a no, no cell phone ever policy, and your cell phone would get taken away for the day if you're caught using it in class, so I think it was pretty effective. They thought it was disrespectful and they did, but no one really um, which was pretty well enforced if a teacher saw you with a cell phone, they asked you to take it to your locker um, or they would take it away and you would have to go to the office to pick it up later that day and then after your cell phone was confiscated second or third time, your parents would have to come get your cell phone for you. Um, there was a like natural disaster kind of thing where I lived, like this uh, tornado warning in which they said we were able to take our cell phones if we wanted to text our parents but not call them. Um, so that was kind of nice that they are at least open-minded. We also did like a concert once where the school had us have our cell phones there to vote for who we liked the best. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, I think they used them effectively. They weren't totally like, no cell phones, they're awful. They were like, hey, this isn't cool for class. Do you want to use them? Not on our time. So I think it was a really good approach. You could have them in your backpack, but you couldn't have them out so effectively if you couldn't have them at all. We weren't allowed to have them, generally. Um, was it effective? Not really. It's like, there's always space around, like, sending text messages. No cell phones regardless, and it worked out pretty well. We recognize that students, com uh, that's how they communicate, not just with each other, obviously, but also with their parents. Some kids just like to be disobedient sometimes, and then when you let them do it, it's like, oh, why not? Why not forget it? It's almost like you want to look at the screen. It's almost like a mini TV where you, you're like, you want to look at it. You don't want to go look at a piece of paper. So they're learning. They're getting the wrong message from school that learning is slower. It's not technologically um, advanced, that it's not going to be as exciting. We want to send them a different message. We want to send them that learning can be great. It can be multidimensional. You can do many things at once. And then you can use your cell phone to not only talk to your friends, but also for good things. As shown, there are many different opinions about having a cell phone. However, whether or not we choose to integrate them, society and cell phones will continue to become more dependent on each other. An issue people are struggling with is if the focus of the cell phone will be for classwork or for socialization. Overall, the decision to view them as a positive influence or a negative influence is yours. The future is in your hands. Literally. <laughs>